Yuck Mala! Yuck Mala! Welcome back, my friends, to the Cult Film Showdown. I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and I am truly pleased to be joined by my good friends, and I have Nick Boxer. Greetings and salutations, my fine, fine friends. I hope you're hanging low and floppy. Low and floppy. All right, well... If we're going to talk about, uh, you know, low and floppy, then I guess we'll have to talk to Jack Hall. Yeah, low and floppy for me is talking about my breasts. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Oh, what man, else would I be there referring to? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And and we have James, James Cotta in the house. <laughs> we're off to such a such a great start here we've got uh we've definitely raised the, t- the tenor of the show oh yes well i mean we're, we're good at this we've uh, since since this is you know what movie we're reviewing right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> this does feel a tad on the on the rinse leather repeat side so anyways we are in season 16 of uh of the cult film showdown this is canon fodder where uh, we talk about canon movies and our current canon movie is the naked cage which is a women in prison movie much like all the other women in prison <laughs> movies we've talked about and so thank far. you for completing my summary of the movie <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. So, okay then fair enough nick now okay interestingly enough in the um you know in the they're playing with fire episode from last season uh you know jack mentioned that this had you know would have a warden that was um you know not so good that it would have a prisoner that was going in against her will that it would have a shower scene and general nudity and oddly enough entirely correct so <laughs> you know nick boxer <laughs> now over to you fill us in on the rest of it <laughs> that is the rest of it <laughs> well uh, our innocent girl is named michelle uh the evil woman Warden is a female and does have a sex room within the prison. Uh, I never expected that to be a trope of these films, really. I thought the hot tub was going to be the pink uh, peak of that, and it probably is, but I, in this movie, the neon lights in the sex room with the round bed, I thought that was really hidden home. And the aquariums, the lots of aquariums in this case. The, the aquariums, yeah. But no hot tub. But, you know, you can't have it all in every film, I guess. You, you have the sadistic uh, rapist single male uh, guard in the prison. And, uh, yeah, the, the only thing really remarkable about this film is really the lack of prison guards in the entire film. I think I counted three. Mm, yes. Oh, yeah. And that was something um, else that Jack mentioned was the the rapey prison guard that would that would appear. So, yeah, honestly, yeah. really, um, as of la- at the end of last season, Jack, you completely told us everything about this movie. We probably didn't have to watch it. <laughs> no, I, I you know, I don't know why it is that, uh, you know, every time I watch a prison and woman movie, I'm caught off guard that the movie's rapey. I have no idea. <laughs> really? Probably, That's, that is rather shocking. Time, I'm like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, the the only thing that surprised me about this film was the shower scene, t- scenes were not as gratuitous as in previous women in prison films. Oh, this movie goes by the eight-minute rule, though. Never go more than eight minutes without gratuitous nudity. <laughs> oh, I, I I didn't say there wasn't any. I just said the shower scenes were not where it was found. I was, was only for the four 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 four. Of twenty. I, I was waiting for the big like you know the whole gang gets together for a shower uh, kind of moment. Whereas like twelve women in the in the shower together, which absolutely is a is a trope. But yeah, this this one tended to avoid that and just went for nudity everywhere else. Mm-hmm. I was also disappointed to see that there was no de-lousing uh, mm. scene. Mm-hmm. One oh, of my favorites in this genre. Yeah, well, still, it had pretty much everything else. And I think that's the problem is uh, I wanted to keep the going with the Women in Prison movies because they're such a, a staple of the of the B-movie diet. 
but uh, I think three and two seasons might be have been <laughs> too too many. I I tend to agree. I, I think the problem was is that as you're watching this movie, like it absolutely like. Do I think this is a strong women in prison movie? I actually do because I think that the acting is really quite good in this one overall. But do I think that this is a a very like tonal normal? Uh, women in prison movie yes i absolutely do that as well you know? it's incredibly yeah. sleazy <laughs> what else it, do you need it's it swings between incredibly sleazy and after school special <laughs> yes. uh, there are moments a... you're right there are moments of after school special <laughs> they all learn points for lesson. actually showing us the crime before she's in their prison mm. usually it starts at the prison doors yeah. Well, and that's and and now don't get me wrong. I mean, I've seen a shocking amount of women in prison movies, but like, you know, so, so that's not, uh, you know, that that is a a tad abnormal. It's been done better, I think, in, in other movies, but it's just like it's one of those, it's one of those cases where like, okay, so you have that, and I was almost wondering, like, oh, really? Is this when is this going to get into the women in prison? And then it does, and then yeah, it's it's really weird because there's kind of this. It's almost like a bit of a roller coaster where when you hit your highs of the women in prison and then you get your lows, which is the after school special and you, and it suddenly like slows down and you're like, whoa, what's going on here? This is really weird. Did anybody count to see how many minutes it actually was before it got into the women in prison? I, it is, it's quite far. It's pretty mm-hmm. far, isn't it? It's comparatively far. I would yeah. say probably at least like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, for a film that's only 90 minutes long, that's quite a long. Yeah, yeah, That's quite exactly. a long stretch, yeah. Yeah, a good, like, 15, 20% of the movie is, is not in prison. But that's okay. They make up for it with, by being in prison for the rest of it. Well, yeah, I mean, prison for the rest of it and and just, like, really prison-y. <laughs> just, like, I don't, <laughs> like it's, it's hard to express how truly, um, you know, tropey the, the prison stuff really is <laughs> not only That's was not... this so familiar having seen those other two movies i swear we've seen this prison <laughs> yeah yeah <it's> true. <laughs> i think we saw this prison in one of the other movies too you know what i think you're right let's face it uh, i mean the women in prison movies are best done when they have uh german or filipino uh ties to them and this one does not have either one <laughs> 16 minutes was the count there on uh, yes, when we yes, actually entered the minutes. prison. Oh, wow. You're quick there. Yeah. Uh, well, the, uh, the, the bad girl was I, – I, I enjoyed her introduction. Yeah, she had some character to her. Because she was uh, it was – well, it was really odd uh, power structure in this movie. Like we're mm-hmm. used to more of a more of a unified bad guy in it. And that's, uh, that's really not what we see in this one. Uh, you know the warden's dirty, but like so is one of the guards, and they're not dirty together. And then the 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 the, the like the woman who runs the like the tough gang in the prison also isn't working with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know more more complex uh, power structure in this. The woman who think. runs the the big big woman that runs the gang in the prison was completely evil. I think she, at one point she murders somebody for for not paying paying her money or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And on the other hand, she was like good friends with the hero. And yeah, this is she robbed the right really kind strange. of bank. Well, yeah, but it's, it's, it's strange that you would make this person and then have her do completely evil, bad things after establishing that she's friends with your hero. Like it's, it's a really, can you think of another movie where they do that? <laughs> It's a commentary on how people are complex. I, I you just don't, you don't I, know their story. Yeah, I, I mean, I you know, I think that there was either a that lot. or bad filmmaking. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, and because well, that was one of my problems. Not like not just the bad filmmaking per se, but like, but uh, because normally I like bad filmmaking, but but I think when I think about the problems, it's that it felt like we had five separate stories going on, and. They were all kind of running parallel to each other as opposed to really joining up. Yeah, they established the warden and that she's bad and she's having sex with these women, but they never take it anywhere. They just establish it and it's like a storyline or a plot thread and then nothing. 
Well, you know? and then and then the big <laughs> one kills the big one kills the 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 one that's having sex with the warden, and that just doesn't that doesn't seem to really bother anybody. It just oh, <laughs> oh. shit happens. Yeah, it's a really it's it's a really odd script, <laughs> and it was written and directed by the same guy, so it's his vision, guys. <laughs> it's his artistic vision. Are you sure it wasn't just a shuffling of the pages from another film? <laughs> Very possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, I would not be surprised. He just, he just seems went to me like we might, we might need to go to scoring pretty soon on this one. <laughs> it, it, I don't know much. Have we delved? <laughs> Have we delved into the, the subtleties of this well, one? Well, <laughs> if, if you want to know well, what, what I learned this from this, teach? it's just like... <laughs> What did this film teach you? Did this film teach anybody anything? I learned that uh, John I mean, Trelawski has... can be criminally underused. I mean, yeah. it has yeah, it, it has a. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that it has after school special type stuff should mean that it taught you something. I I learned that men shouldn't wear leather studded jackets. Mm-hmm. That prison guard on the motorcycle did look like, wow, um, yeah, it looked like he was for rent. I learned uh, that you can get stabbed directly through the center of the hand and it won't leave a mark later. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. That's and, true. I, yeah, I learned that hard. wearing uh, the pantyhose over your head when when uh, robbing a bank in no way hides your identity. <laughs> and And I learned that pimps treat their hookers real nice and drive them around in a Jeep. And then, and then it's all it's all like a big happy family. I'm Pretty much true. true. Do. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't learn this, but I I, I appreciate having even more evidence that uh, the easiest thing to come by in a prison is hairspray. Hairspray oh. and nails, fake nails, and fake lipstick. Yeah. Yeah. Like really, yeah. all those things were really yeah maybe well represented. Some, is this the it's most eighties eighties movie hair yet? No. No. <laughs> it's got the a fair lot. Fair hair's but, pretty good, though. It's, yeah. I, this is yet another movie that's in like a four-year span that, we, <laughs> that we've done. With this, that I, there's like four or five years. There's like four years in the in the 80s that are like half the movies we've done. So it's yeah. just it is of this its is time. This is like 84 to 88 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's go to scoring. Uh-huh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I see no reason to prolong this. Uh, <laughs> in our search for the ultimate B-movies, we rate each film in five categories, none of which is objective quality. The first we call schlock appeal, and we start with Stan. I'll be honest, this one's going to suffer for me uh, because it is so close to our other two uh, women in prison movies. So um, it's fine. I'll give it a six. I'm going one higher just because I think that's the minimum minimum uh, women in prison movie can score on the schlocko meter. <laughs> well, I didn't know that when I decided to score it a five. <laughs> so I didn't okay. know seven was the minimum it could reach. I, I mean, I, it's just sleazy, but it's not really schlocky in the right way. Schlocky has an appeal to it. That's why it's called schlock appeal. This doesn't really have any appeal. It's just sleazy. You apparently I was need more to watch. To watch the film before I watched it, than during I was watching it. So I think yep. Jack, you yeah. need to watch way more women in prison movies because if you think this one's sleazy, you, you need to watch some more. <laughs> this is even yeah. the sleaziest one we've watched. No, no, this one's not even <laughs> no, close. No, I didn't say it was. <laughs> the, it's, it's also not the sluggiest one we watched. Oh God, That's no, true. absolutely not. That's true. I, I will. Uh, I'll also say a seven. I think. Uh, I think the promise of this film uh, is – I'll agree with Nick that I was much more excited before the film than actually watching it. Uh, and uh, I, I even found in our uh, in our text history that I sent this to Stan at one point uh, because it was released on his birthday. Yeah, that's and, correct. And we all thought, like, that that movie looks amazing. And uh, then, then, you know, it was fine. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> but but I think that the women in prison automatically is quite a lot of schlock. Uh, more heart than budget is the next category. I did not see a budget. I did not see a budget either. No, I'm sure that there's not really much of a budget for this. Um, 
it's got a prison. It's got women. <laughs> you know, it has John Terleski. Um, I have five. Uh, you guys didn't see a budget. I didn't see much heart. Three. Uh, after school special heart. Five. I photocopied an old script and made some, made, uh, some name changes. Uh, two. Well, well I, that feels like a different category, but yeah, it's totally fair. <laughs> what the fuck moments? Um, well, the the qu- biggest question that I'll ask uh, right off the bat that I noticed was like, you know, where's all the lingerie, man? I mean, this <laughs> for a women in prison movie, I needed more lingerie. <laughs> but, uh, like, it's like dresses for the 1920s is what they got here for yeah. uh, for times. They did wear them in a variety of ways. Actually, I was counting for a while, but they all had the same dress, but they all seemed to wear it differently. But yeah, I mean, other than like the uh, the you know missing mark in the hand, there was really only one moment that I noticed that really stood out for me is near near the end in the big battle scene when when our rapey guard winds up getting getting shot and so he's all gimpy and then the the entirety of the african-american wing gets let out to run towards him so he starts gimping away and and i swear the cutbacks between them chasing him and him gimping away lasted like three minutes and i was just like how is this guy who turns to shoot one of the prisoners every like you know, 30 seconds. How is he not being overrun yet? But he actually reaches, like, the end of the jail. And and it's that's about the only thing that I really noticed that was like, well, that's just stretching it out. Um, otherwise, yeah, I'll give it a four. Yeah, uh, yeah, not high on the WTF. The pantyhose disguise was mentioned. Um, that the hole in hand was mentioned. Um, the only one I really other can come up with was, uh, the sniffing boyfriend (laughs) to really ram home the, he, he may have a drug problem. Uh, the, the snorting every three seconds, uh, was a little bit over the top. Yeah. The fact Uh, that we see him snorting cocaine isn't enough. (laughs) You need to really drive it home. Yeah, they, I mean, they hammer it home in that first 12 minutes hard. Uh, but you can't go high. I'm going with a four. Yeah, sometimes you watch a film and it's a WTF vibe, and you're like, what What, what am I even uh, – and it kind of has that a little bit. But as far as moments, the only one for me that's a really good one, and, and, and it's a really good one, is the fact that – Everybody in the prison, like, is that some prisoners didn't have to wear a prison uniform at all. Other prisoners, everybody that was white got a blue uniform, and everybody that was black got a pink uniform. Mm-hmm. And I think I could just picture them getting off the bus and being handed their uniforms, like, what do we got? We got a white. It's a blue. We got a blue. You know, what do you got? We need a pink. We got a black person. Need a pink. I mean, it's so weird well i mean i can even explain that in like real world terms i'm guessing it was different wings because all the black uh actresses were definitely not in the white girl bunking area that is true and i believe there are segregated prisons still i mean it's along gang lines but wait 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 you're guessing that something made sense. <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it, but yeah, that's actually what why they're even different. <laughs> because the 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 when the brunette bad girl shows up, uh, she's in pink. That's true. She's in pink for no reason. All right, all right. Still give it a four. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the uh, there might be more. What the fuck did they thought that out? Um, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it does. It, it was kind of, uh, just a movie that happened. Um, it didn't, I didn't have any moments of, uh, what the heck was that? Need to have rewind. Uh, it's only three for me. 
memorable moments. I will give this one a one for John Terleski. Um, I'm not going high, but I I did enjoy the bad girl elect- electrocution scene. Um, well, that made no sense, actually. Well, oh, I yeah, don't that, care if it made sense. Yeah. She sizzled real good on that wall. <laughs> um, I, I enjoyed it greatly. Reminded me of Death Warrant. Um, I think that was the movie where somebody got electrocuted in prison. Uh, but no, I'm going to forget. I, I, I was actively forgetting this movie while watching it. It's just another women in prison movie with nothing to distinguish itself to. Yeah, I won't forget the look of the boyfriend in that in that uh, um, nylon in the you know over his head. For some reason, that stuck with me. It just looks so stupid, like that anybody thinks that that's hiding anybody's features. For some reason, that stuck with me. And I found the girl that was like the girl that was her best friend that was the former junkie, uh, super hot. So I'll. I think I'll remember her her being the the most uh, you know visible person in that one shower scene that we talked about. Um, it's pretty weak though. Three. I yeah. I mean, I really like the Terleski part. Um, I think uh, you know, I think Bonnie and Clyde story with uh, Terleski and the brunette would have been more interesting. Oh God, yeah, for uh, sure. I was hoping <laughs> that that's where this was going. <laughs> Uh, only a two for me, but now that uh, Nick has brought up that electrocution scene, it reminded me of the uh, the the guard, uh, the cop who's undercover as the guard, which is another thread that goes absolutely nowhere. Nowhere, yeah. Yeah. no, oh, sure. <laughs> and she dies too, doesn't she? And she, yeah, she, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it makes no sense. Spoiler uh, alert. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to a four on uh, on what the fucks though, because because uh, that was that whole end sequence is a. A lot of things coming together that don't make any sense. Yeah. Well, there there is the also fact. weird gun reloading in this. Guns run out and then they get reloaded and not 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 with all the bullet. I couldn't figure out what guns were loaded and what weren't. <laughs> uh, well, I, I just, you know, the reason I said that that made no sense when she electrocuted it is because it was just basically a panel that got <laughs> opened. I mean, there was – it's like if you backed into a, you know, a panel in your house – you're not going to get electrocuted just from being near it. Like, it was in no prison. It was in the basement. She had fire extinguisher foam on her. So she does that, <laughs> would that play a part? No. <laughs> it pushed pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> into, really into completely safe wires. <laughs> hey, that, right. that was a dangerous room. It said it all over the place. I, I have right. less, I have no real problem with it. For, for, uh, given that it's a women in freaking prison movie. <laughs> all right, did, this uh, episode's Nick, already going longer than it needs to. Did Anything Nick, else? Did Nick find his no spitting sign? Every, all, every no, other prison I movie we've done. Find a no spitting sign. <laughs> all right, uh, f- our final category is crazy concept. Uh, I mean, I can't say when this was released in relation to other women in prison movies, but. As we've established, it is very much a women in prison movie zero. Yeah, one. <laughs> if you're making a women in prison movie, this is the film you make. Um, you do some of the, some of it better, maybe, but yeah, it's one. Three, largely for having the first twenty percent of the movie not being a women in prison movie. I. <laughs> uh, one for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this movie does get punished for being over our 95 minute uh, guide. Uh, it's 107 minutes, uh, which brings it to a final total of an anemic 33.5 out of 100, uh, putting it in the bottom five of the octagon. It's Oh, yeah. It completely suffered for being amongst the most generic movies that we could have possibly if, chosen. If we hadn't seen those other two and we watched this, I think it would have scored about 10 points higher, but it still yeah, wouldn't have scored that's... too strong. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it would have done better with if if this was the one that we had uh yeah, it started with we, we the tropes wouldn't have been as expected. Mhm. Well, and and that was the, the exact thing, Jack, is that you described this movie to a T with three little lines at the end of last season. I mean, it's just like wow. 
there you yeah, go. And, and the funny thing is, all that at the time was a positive. Yeah, <laughs> and now and now it's and now after watching it, it's officially a negative. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I hope nobody's picking a women in prison movie for this next season. <laughs> I I used to think about it until we did the two in a row, and then that was the end of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I do watched... not pitch a season. No, I've watched one that I felt that I feel like would do well because because it's got a lot of weird elements to the well, to the tropes. Give but it give it I'm some not, space then. Not ready yeah. for it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Give it some space now, and sure. maybe it'll do well. Are they yeah. in a space? Are they in a space prison? No, no, like, they're not be in a space prison. prison. That Is it ready? No. <laughs> oh, now we're going to play charades. But, like, <laughs> but uh, is it bigger than a bread box? <laughs> <laughs> Does it involve doing business? Two we words. Do... Film. Okay. <laughs> we can do some business. All right. We are on Instagram at the Cult Film Showdown. We are also on YouTube and on Patreon if you want to support what we're doing here in our search for the ultimate B movies. And uh we are sponsored by We Talk Podcast.com, the home of the Octagon, where you can look at our entire record of uh, our search, which is well over 100 films now. And uh, We Talk Podcasts has a Twitter, and they have a Facebook. Excellent. Give us $1 on the Patreon. 50 cents even. (laughs) You won't get anything for it, but give us something. If if three of you give us $1.50, we'll be ecstatic. And then we will give you something. I tell you that right now. Three people give us $1.50, we'll give you something. Yeah, I think at that we could just phone them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair totally fair <laughs> all right well uh this season is going to wrap up with our next episode uh see, season 16 cannon fodder with american ninja 2 we've bookended this season with some sam Furstenberg and michael dudikoff so uh so we're going to see if this does better than uh, naked cage or if it does better than american ninja 1 but uh i guess we're going to find out so um, let's let's go and do that um, for Jim and for Jack and for Nick. I am your host, Eighth Dan Stanadu, and thanks for listening to the Cult Film Showdown. If there is a hell on earth, it's inside these walls. Only dreams are nightmares, and the only escape is death. You just lost your protection. Michelle is a desperate angel, taking a one-way trip through a living hell. Because of your lies, I gotta spend three years in this stinking hellhole. But even good girls grow up fast in the naked cage. I want five minutes alone with Michelle. You'll get your five minutes. There's nowhere to run, no place to hide. Once the iron bars trap you inside. After everything you've done to me, you don't think I have the guts to kill you? The Naked Cage.